Hello Global Studies 9, this is Mr. Harris here, and this is the first video of the school year. Uh, well, this is, is a part of the flipped classroom, so lectures are going to be mostly outside of the classroom, on the internet, on YouTube. And uh, part of the reason why we do this is so that there's more time in class, and also uh, because most students responded from our flipped classrooms last year that they prefer this system because then they can pause, they can uh, replay parts, you know, this is on the internet now, so it's not just a one-time lecture. You can come back to it when you want. Now, the one issue that did come up was that uh, you're not uh, able to ask me questions real-time. Uh, well, no worries there. If you have any questions, just open up your email, write down the question as you're watching the video, and send it to me, and I will do my best to reply to you as soon as possible. So here we go with our very first video of the year, Chapter 1, Section 1, Human Origins in Africa. So the big question we have to ask ourselves first is, what is prehistory? And uh, the definition of prehistory, time before history, is any time before writing existed. So give or take a thousand years, roughly 5,000 years ago. So that's a key vocabulary word you should know first. Now I want you to see this very important map here showing human migration uh, the past millions of years. And uh, the key point here is, if you look at the left side of the screen, you'll notice 3.6 million years ago. So the oldest remnants of people are found about that long ago. Um, and it's, it's actually got longer in recent years because in archaeology and anthropology, you'll notice that these studies are constantly changing because people are constantly discovering uh, new types of fossils, you know, new types of artifacts and uh, for human beings even though in this map it says 3.6 million years ago uh, new studies show that it could have been four or even five million years ago in fact the newest studies show that it might not have even been east africa it might have been north west africa so we're not a hundred percent sure there but for now we're going to stick with the book and say the earliest human beings come from east africa now uh, several occupations specialize when it comes to this prehistory era, and that is archaeologists, anthropologists, and paleontologists. So if you're a fan of Friends, um, there's a character called Ross. His job was a paleontologist. Now, the first one we're going to look at is archaeologists. So archaeologists are those who learn about the earliest people through excavating their earliest settlements. What they're looking for is bones and artifacts. Or they're looking for hard evidence, hard things that they can use to deduce and guess about the people that lived during that time. So here's a list of artifacts. And archaeologists would look at each one of these. They'd figure out you know, when it was made. They'd look at the shape. They'd look at maybe how um, it's been damaged in certain parts. And through looking at these different artifacts, they'd try to figure out the lifestyle people lived during that era. And um, what's interesting is when we look at these ancient artifacts from thousands of years ago, the, a lot of them have actually still exist today, but just in sort of an evolved form, like the 21st facts. And what's interesting is how these prehistoric artifacts all have modern counterparts. So even though we've changed as humankind and, you know, with computers now and iPhones, how a lot of these very prehistoric um, items are still still exist today just in a more evolved format and um, when it comes to looking at these prehistoric artifacts a key word here is deduction so I have a picture there of Sherlock because he's a master deduction and what it means is you don't have an exact answer in front of you but you have various pieces of evidence you string those evidences together and you figure out what it may be used for so for example the bone fish hook maybe they found it near a lake where there was fish and maybe they looked at the shape of the bone fish hook and figured out that the uh, the hooks were used to catch fish by also looking at the human uh, fossils back then and looked at their teeth and noticed how you know their teeth was eroding or wasn't eroding and you know it's basically a combination of various evidence or lack of evidence that lead towards these um, archaeologists figuring out how artifacts were used so you know we have everything from this is the um, nutting stone which is the old version of what would be a nutcracker today we also have for example here the um, hammer stone which if you'll probably notice is very, very similar to what we have today known as the hammer. Now here's an example scenario I would like you to look at. So you are an archeologist and you come about 
uh, the remnants of a civilization and you discover that all houses are of equal size, that musical instruments exist, and that large walls were built around the city. So based on these three facts, all the houses are equal size, musical instruments exist, large walls built around the city, what can you deduce? What can you guess about that society? So let's run through each one. The first one being that there's no social classes. Right. If the houses are all of equal size, we can guess that there's no social classes. Secondly, musical instruments means it's an advanced civilization. Right? And a civilization that's not advanced does not have time to dabble in music and instruments and that type of jazz, no pun intended. And finally, number three, the large walls are evidence that there was conflict with surrounding civilizations. And we'll see that with Mesopotamia, for example. Various city-states had big walls surrounding them. And uh, again, it's not like we have manuscripts of these wars, but we can just guess based on these high walls is most likely to protect their cities. Now, anthropologists study the cultures of ancient peoples. So they also use artifacts, but their key thing is looking for the lifestyle people lived. So they focus less on the actual artifacts, but they try to make deductions of the cultures of the people. Paleontologists study the fossils. So they, again, they study specifically the fossils. They look at the dates of the fossils and they try to figure out, based on these remnants, uh, when species existed, which species may have mated, which species went extinct and when, and to a certain degree how. And that's what paleontologists do. Now, all right, so human beings and uh, clothing. So clothing style, very different from today. And um, people during prehistoric times relied heavily on animal fur. This is because human skin just is not good enough to get through the cold. And um, they also made jewelry through animal teeth and shells. Now a few uh, vocab words you should know. You should know about Mary Leakey. She, uh, her and her team uh, discovered one of the earliest footprints uh, we've ever found of men uh, back in 1978 in the country of Tanzania. Um, a few, uh, about four years before that, Donald Johansson's team discovered the earliest uh, human hominid known as Lucy. And the uh, interesting story why it was called Lucy was because while they were digging up uh, Lucy, uh, they were listening to the song by the Beatles. Um, it goes something like this. So yeah, Lucy in the Sky uh, with diamonds is playing throughout the time of es excavation. Now what's interesting is in your book it says Lucy is the oldest. However, uh, because after this book was published, this is just within the last, I believe, five years, another um, fossil was discovered called Artie, which uh, outdated Lucy by almost a million years uh, discovered in Ethiopia. And this is the oldest one we have today. So it's not Lucy, but Artie is the oldest discovered um, hominid remnants. Now, uh, to make matters even more complicated, I know I mentioned this earlier in the video, but um, history is constantly being rewritten, especially when it comes to anthropology, uh, paleontology, and archaeology, because new stuff is constantly being um, found. Another good example would be what I mentioned earlier about the earliest humans. Um, originally, for the last hundred years or so, we thought East Africa is where earliest people were found, uh, but now this may change uh, depending on this new discovery made in Morocco of a fossil that could be potentially six, seven, eight million years old. Again, we're still waiting for the details about this discovery. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit educational personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. It's not to be used for copying and selling. No copyright infringement intended. Uh, have a great day. Goodbye.